Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about my progress in the newest Sentinel League. So uh, I've played now for about one day and nine hours, totally not addicted or anything. Uh, currently level 95. I uh, had a few deaths, a lot of them user error though to be fair. Um, a lot of them were just like stupid on me. I'd probably say like of the deaths that were unavoidable meaning like you know i pretty much just got blasted to another dimension i'd say about three of them were to like ritual stacking arc nemesis mobs that just i don't even know what happened uh maybe like two of them from like crazy nemesis combinations the other four were like absolute 100 percent like user error brain turned off and just like screwed up boss mechanics all right with that being said let me go ahead and jump right on into this t16 port map to show you guys a demonstration um right so don't worry after this we're going to go ahead and go over the gear and everything so i will also be using my sentinel controller here um so you can see i activated it right now now my sentinel is currently set to basically juice um only yellow mobs and only blue mobs so it will not be juicing like any white mobs necessarily Anytime I come across a juice pack, you'll know because it will not instantly die. And whenever that happens, we will use our Infernal Cry to explode the whole pack. So an example is like, see this blue pack here, Infernal Cry, and kaboom, goodbye. Infernal Cry has been a godsend <clears throat> in this league, especially when you don't have good damage. Uh, it really, really helps carry. So here's a shrine, Infernal Cry, and kaboom. Thank you very much. I'll be taking that. I'm not really gonna read the altar mod just for the sake of this video. I don't wanna extend the video that long. Uh, you'll notice I am not using a death's rush. And the reason I'm not using a death's rush is solely because of the fact that I crafted a very good ring and uh, I'll show, I'll talk about the ring later. Normally I would absolutely use death's rush still, but my chaos resistance is actually stupidly high. It's 91%. So, um,. I mean, it's not really 91, it's over capped to 91. A lot of other people in my chat have been complaining about the Rejuvener Arc Nemesis mod, the one that basically disables your regeneration. Uh, I've personally never really found it to be much of an issue unless it's on, like, some insanely unkillable, like, metamorph or... I don't know, like a Penta Essence mob plus with Rejuvenator, but that stuff hasn't even happened to me yet at all in M95. The only time it's really been super deadly under the circumstances for me has been in the middle of a ritual when it's kind of hard to see what's going on. But in like a normal scenario like this, it's very contained. Um, I don't know, it's either, either A, you could just like dodge it. I know we don't like skipping mobs, so I typically don't. Or B, you can just kill it and try to move away when it does the green pulse. <clears throat> I have also completely dropped essence from my tree. And uh, the only reason I completely dropped it, because I would still like to have it, is I don't really like the way Sentinel works with League Mechanics. It's kind of like, well, I'm going to have to actually corrupt that one. But it's actually kind of backwards, in my opinion, how you pop your Sentinel controller at the beginning of the map, right? And then you come across like a Breach or a Legion or um, uh, Essence in my case. And you're like, oh, well, I kind of can't click that because I'm going to take the mob's HP and multiply it by like five. And I don't really care about the loot in that sense because I'm, I'm clicking my Essence for the Essence, right? I'm not clicking it for any other reason specifically. And there is like one perk you can spec into to turn off your sentinel and turn it back on again but not for the stalker so hey saint's treasure that one's kind of just weird uh my single target's actually all right it's getting much better uh, i do not have a source of exposure yet so once i get my source of exposure single target will go up again um and then on top of it going up again when i get uh uh I forgot. Oh, a better weapon. Yeah, a better weapon. When we multi-mod craft our weapon and our ashes, I'm still using just a, just a thick life, life regen. But yeah, that's really about it. Okay, uh, let's talk about the character and the progression. So now that you saw that, 
I want to try to briefly just go over my gear progression. Now, remember, uh, under the FA or the RF command in my stream, remember that <clears throat> I do need to plug this, I think, because I think a lot of people forget about it. So, um, we do have two different places for all of the information. They're both updated. So, we currently have a actual website, aka the Wikipedia. Um, still work in progress, big work in progress. But if you go here, you can click and you can get your answer to pretty much everything, right? Uh, and then we have the Google Sheets, which you guys know about. Uh, so that's pretty much it from there. So uh, let's talk about my character. Let's start with flasks. Flasks are a very big part of playing Righteous Fire. Um, in general, they're a big part of pretty much any build. But I would say builds that soak incoming damage, it's more important that you understand what your flasks do. So two of the, the bread and butter flasks, I like to say, three if you count Quicksilver, would be your granite. So you can see here my granite is rolled with 48% increased armor. So that means that when I press my granite, I go from 31k to 45k. And then my ruby has the 3% life regen. This is unveiled through Katarina. It's not the most important. It's very important later. But at the beginning, remember regeneration is not just mitigation. You also need mitigation. So the ruby, um, you can see it's spiking our regen by quite a bit. But yeah, so um, the reason I bring a big emphasis on Ruby Flask is remember that there are three elements in PoE. There's fire damage, lightning damage, and uh, ice damage or cold damage. Not only does the Ruby Flask mitigate the damage from uh, fire, it also mitigates your own RF, thus making more use of your energy shield regeneration, right? Um, there's also a very common question that I've been getting about your... <clears throat> about people not being able to sustain your energy shield. So I'm just gonna plug my good friend GoXLR for that. If your ES is still going down after you've ascended and acquired Pious Path, make sure you're running a stone golem. If it's still going down, you just need to get more life regen on your gear. So one of the big sources of life regen that I like to look for is my gloves. And the reason why I bring a uh, good, bring emphasis to my gloves is because your chest piece is gonna be six length. So it's kind of hard sometimes to recraft that. Your helmet's going to be elder crafted. Your shield might be unique. Your boots are going to be unique. Your rings don't have as high rolls. Your amulet is harder to get regen on, right? So that would be belt, I guess. Belt and gloves would be where you want to get your life regen because they're the least likely to be swapped right away. Um, as you can see here, these were harvest crafted. Um, so on gloves, gloves have a low level, like a low tier of flat life regen so i think it's better to get percent life regen on gloves uh, so that's one big thing to bring emphasis to okay uh moving on i want to talk about my uh just kind of continue on the flask we didn't really finish so i do have the use charges when full but you could manually click those next up i run a quicksilver which is just basically for movement you can see how i kind of like traverse through my map uh, i'm running a silver flask which is normally i would not run but brutal restraints are very expensive and I don't have a Death's Rush, which I'll show in a second. Uh, so this is literally just for Onslaught. And this is just for 40% increased damage. You don't have to run this at all. It's kind of redundant. You don't get the Consecrated Ground, but it gives me damage and I don't have survivability issues. So uh, let's move on to the rings. So I crafted this ring with a Delirium Essence. You can see that the damage over time multiplier is what the outcome is guaranteed on the Delirium Essence. So that would be over here. Um, if I go to Essence, you can see Essence of Delirium, and it has uh, on ring 12 to 15% damage over time. So I basically hit this, but first I used um, Catalyst for Resistance. So you can see it gives 27% Chaos Res with 40. This ring gives me 67% Chaos Resist with 15% Dot Multi and 34 Life Regen. The life regen, I would much rather have like a resistance personally, but it's still definitely not bad at all. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this ring. So this ring is currently why I don't have a death's rush because I'm overcapped on my res right now. This ring is a pile of poop. Um, it does have a bit of increased damage on it, but yeah, I need to really replace this ring. Uh, this one's kind of bad. Uh, <clears throat> going over my six link and how I got it, I actually got very lucky this league. So as you guys saw, I do use my Sentinel controller uh, controller quite a bit. I've been maxed from day two in my Sentinel controller, and this will get moved around a lot, so don't just like copy this. Uh, but I ended up getting a Geomancer's Incubator 
which is a six link incubator and it dropped a saintly chainmail which i then crafted uh i got lucky using reforge life and harvest for this chess piece i did not use essences because i didn't have essences day one of the league or this chess piece specifically um so this was just basically harvest crafted um and the implicits right now are not the best uh i definitely would like max all res but i don't have that much currency so we're just leaving that alone legacy of fury i snagged for about three and a half exalt uh biggest clear speed difference entering red maps huge i know they're expensive but biggest massive clear uh, uh clear speed increase upon entering red maps they were kind of crazy um so that's pretty huge shield uh one of my new favorite shields actually it costs about one chaos and is really good ignore the onslaught because to get that onslaught you'd have to sacrifice two jewels and i don't think that's worth it but you still get two max all res very high block chance on the shield good armor good life it's just a good shield uh my helmet i'm very happy with my helmet took me 30 essence of horror before i got any usable outcome so i feel you guys on the rng but i landed a pretty good helmet um so i got t4 int which adds as which adds to crit chance for our fire trap for our elemental overload uh our fire trap is at 20 percent crit chance with literally no investment so that's kind of cool um right so i hit basically conk effect with t1 life regen the intelligence and then some armor uh pretty happy with my helmet uh, i'll definitely recraft another one later but it's good enough for now uh, and then my scepter so as for what I have doing or what I've been doing with my Atlas, this was just Harvest Reforged Fire Spams, I believe. Uh, I want to talk about my Atlas a little bit. So this is currently my Atlas and it is a clusterfuck. So right now I still have Betrayal because I don't have all the unveils I want. Uh, I am on a complete blocking spree, blocking anything that looks at me the wrong way. So currently the only thing I have open is like Breach, uh, Expedition, and Harvest yep we are farming squidward for our ashes of the stars uh i need to actually get these three points back for shrines shrines just make the shrines just make the game so much fun um so shrines i'm absolutely keeping i have recently specced into strong boxes and boy do i forget how much i love strong boxes they are so damn good uh, for currency and everything so this is pretty much what i'm doing with the atlas right now just to show you guys uh, the remaining points i'm going to go into buried knowledge and then probably go back into these three points right here uh the atlas completion we're doing pretty good um haven't really tried to do much atlas completion but i just realized we're almost done so then i need to work on my favorite maps over here uh, if you see the squidward kill counter down here this is basically how many times i've killed the pinnacle boss so that would be eater of worlds so we have five kills in total one quest four kills no ashes yet just straight boots uh right now i want to talk about my passive tree because i have made a slight modification uh and that modification is just a currency sink so as i do a lot of harvest i've been buying my jewels and i have been harvest spamming my jewels so i ended up landing a triple cluster jewel here which is corrosive elements burning bright and disorienting display in my opinion infinitely worse than what i have linked in the pob but but corrosive elements is not bad right now because i do not have a source of exposure as i just haven't really re-rolled my gloves so this is okay right now when i'm doing the bossing because it basically just gives my fire trap i think a chance to apply fire exposure um then we have a medium right now which is basically cremator and burning bright and you just have to look at it this is 30 percent increased damage this is 25 percent and this is 12 percent and then there's a jewel here i've also been scooping up the market on some jewels so i'm basically looking for and i hate myself for saying this because i know now the market's gonna get fucked but basically fire multi fire damage max life or fire multi maximum life um burning damage or multi like you can there's there's also global multi not fire multi you can like reverse and switch those up so i've got currently one jewel there Two jewel here uh, and then i think three jewel right here so anytime i'm replacing for multi jewels what i try to do is respec any extra fluff life nodes uh and i try to put those into a jewel instead because it's just infinitely better um 
what i'm thinking of potentially doing when i get more damage if i don't need infernal cry later is actually reconnect through here and then just gut this literal whole section here so that would be this travel node this travel node and then i would gut call to arms and i think maybe all of bloodless but i'm not sure uh and then i would just go further into a cluster jewel like a second cluster jewel setup but that's more expensive so we're leaving that alone uh just to cover my links everything should pretty much be identical but i'm just going to go ahead and cover it anyway so i've got hex touch flammability frost blink remember you're going to switch to ellie weakness when you get a ashes of the stars uh swift affliction fire trap trap in mind life tap we got a 21 fire trap on my first vol pretty happy uh defiance banner molten shell infernal cry uh purity of elements burning that's just leveling that's not a real gem uh purity of elements uh determination and blood rage blood rage is just for frenzy charges for now uh life tap faster attacks shield charge and malevolence and swift affliction elemental focus burning damage righteous fire which we also have a 21 uh got very lucky there awakened ink aoe which i have snagged myself personally because i just really like awakened ink aoe and life tap uh, and that pretty much covers everything i could possibly show you guys uh just to kind of cover tooltip damage um so no flasks on no frenzy charges fire trap is 733k and rf is 400,000. so that's pretty much about it hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves if you guys get stuck anywhere don't forget to come ask questions on the stream a lot of the time i will just redirect you back to my document but that doesn't mean that you cannot ask or communicate with my chat for help uh they're also very helpful i've just been getting slammed on questions and my brain is like literally fried but i still want to help where i can right does that sort of make sense anyway that's pretty much about it see you guys all tomorrow remember if you guys like the video don't forget to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day but sundays at twitch.tv slash pox see you guys all in sentinel league